Hi, I'm Fred. And I'm Sarah, a.k.a. the Paris Quiz Mistress. We're two friends addicted to trivia, and we're watching... Rewatching... Alias. But this is... Not, not an, an Alias, alias podcast. podcast. Every episode, we play general knowledge trivia on a theme. Five quiz questions for you to play along. And the iconic early 2000s spy thriller show starring Jennifer Garner... Doesn't really matter... Because this is Not, Not an, an Alias, alias podcast. podcast. Hello, people of the sound waves, and welcome back to Not an Alias Podcast. I am with my co host, the wonderful Paris Quiz Mistress Sarah. Hello. How are you doing? As always, getting through it. <laughs> Just getting there. Ooh, that laughter you heard is the laughter of our special guest for episode 21. We have Mr. Luke Thompson. Hello, everyone. Uh, still completely confused about most things in my life, but especially Alias, which Ooh. this podcast has nothing to do with. The tradition uh, when we have Luke is that Luke recaps for us because we love confusion. He will recap the episode <laughs> 21 titled Rendezvous. Are you ready, Luke? I'm ready, yeah. Okay. It's okay. a go. The Alliance, which I think is like a health insurance company, tells Sloan not to kill Kazinow and just to work out what he wants. SD6 have Kazinow's representative, that his name is Sark. And Sloan tries to persuade him to work for them, but he just asks for some wine. Sloan plans to use Stark to lure out Kazinow. Vaughn tells Sid to steal some pages from his diary or something instead of killing him. Dixon and Sidney turn up in Paris for the Sark Kazinow meeting. They pretend to be French. For Sidney, this means wearing a ridiculous red wig and acting very uninterested in everything. Bradley Cooper is involved too because Kazinov have been using him to try and reveal SD6. Sid's dad wants to use Will to get Kazinov and Will, that's Bradley Cooper, feels very used by everyone. And then Sidney's dad gives him meth because obviously that's going to counteract the effects of truth serum, which they're going to give him. Uh, <laughs> because everyone knows, right? If someone's going to give you truth serum, take loads of meth, you'll be fine. Sid is undercover as a sexy singer. She does high-tech spy shenanigans while singing quite well, in fact. And Will is being questioned, and suddenly Sidney comes in and kicks everyone. And Will is absolutely pinging on meth. <laughs> <laughs> and... and, and <laughs> And, and truth serum. He's on a cocktail of meth and truth serum. So he's telling the truth very quickly. <sighs> now the CIA are wondering what to do with Will. They don't know what to do with him. Sydney really hates her job because she has no work-life balance. SD6 are tracking Stark and a SWAT team tries to extract him, but he's escaped. And then this cuts to Will at the end. Sark breaks in. And kills the guards, and I think he shoots Bradley Cooper. <laughs> oh. That was not in any <laughs> universe 60 seconds. <laughs> well, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of universes, and none of them. I don't know what, you want, to, what you want to do about that. Uh, absolutely oh, nothing. My um, Lord. Great. I, that was, I mean, that's way too much alias for a podcast, which is anything but. Now, not only do you have to play trivia, you now have to. Do the trivia. Yes, because it's my turn to come up with the trivia questions for episode 21. Yeah. So would you like to speculate, first of all, on what these questions might be about? Ooh, you could do a wine quiz. Certainly. I have a pizza quiz. 30 a, minutes or less. Oh, wow. Just mm -hmm. a pizza quiz, just like, just part of a quiz. And also had Parisian things, because we're in Paris. 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 Which is in... France. Europe. 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 Yeah, I've gone for the completely low-hanging fruit, and I've gone for a Paris-themed set of questions. We Ooh. love it! Not just Paris, slightly more specific, I've gone for the Eiffel Tower. Because every scene where they're mm -hmm. outside in Paris, the Eiffel Tower is there. Yes. Which is how it works. Obviously, because every single location outdoors in this city, the Eiffel Tower is visible, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we sit from the window right now. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. So, five questions about the Eiffel Tower. Here we go. 
Question number one. The Eiffel Tower was the tallest man-made structure in the world until 1930, when it was surpassed by which famous New York skyscraper? I've asked this on my quiz recently. I thought so. But I asked it in the other way. What do you think? I Mm -hmm. think Mm -hmm. where I asked the question with your answer in my question and the answer was the Eiffel Tower. I believe it's the Chrysler Building. Okay. When 1930? Yes. Very Art Deco Mm, fits. Yeah. Yeah. Is it taller than Empire State? I don't know. Uh, Yeah, I I think it might be or else Empire State was later. Okay. No, no, I'll, I'll go with you, especially if you've written the question. Okay, go. Cool. Chrysler Building. The Chrysler Building is the correct answer. Well done. Bonus. Do you want a bonus question for that? Sure. Uh, which structure did the Eiffel Tower replace as the tallest man-made structure? Ooh. Do you want a little clue? Is yeah. it a church? No. Uh, it's in the US. Oh, is it, it the... No. Is it the Empire State Building? No. Oh. The Eiffel Tower is definitely not bigger than the uh, Empire it's State the Building. So, is it the not the Sears Tower? That's much later. Is it a bridge? It's not a bridge. It's made of stone. Oh, is it the St. Louis Arch? It, it is not. No, it's kind of looks ish like the oh, Eiffel Tower. Oh, when? It, it, go to Place de la Concorde. What do you have in the middle? Aha! Uh-huh. Ah. Oh, it's the it's uh, Washington's dong. <laughs> Washington's dong. <laughs> he had a dong like he, that. He's all pointy. Yes, yes. Washington, the Washington Memorial. Washington Old Pointy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Question number two. The Eiffel Tower inspired at least 50 other towers in the world, which are either replicas or just similar in design. Can you name the locations of three other towers directly inspired by or replicas of the Eiffel Tower? And your answers have to be from three separate continents. Oh, okay. So you have the list of 50? I have a list of 50 here. Wow. This God is... damn. I have two. I have one. Okay, what's your one? My one is the easy one. Tokyo? Uh, oh. I oh, know. well. My... Casinos, you know? Oh, okay. So, yeah, ve- Las... like the Vegas. Las Vegas, yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. I didn't even ha- I didn't have that one. Oh, wow. Well. So I think we have three. Ooh, cool. Okay. I think I forgot about Tokyo. Tokyo, I, it's, uh, it's, the, it's red and white. Oh, yes. There's oh, an yeah, emoji yeah. of it. There's one on a hill in Prague. <laughs> no, there is. Damn. Yeah. That's cool. So, yeah, that would be a third That's going to be, yeah, sure. that's, those are our three. So, Prague, Las Vegas, and <laughs> Tokyo. Yeah, it's Las Vegas, the tower at the casino in Las Vegas is one of them. Tokyo Tower in Tokyo, in Japan, is another one. So really- and now I'm searching desperately through this Wikipedia list of replica Eiffel Towers and trying to find Prague. I feel like you've seen it. Yeah, I've seen oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, Petrin, pronounced wrong, Lookout Tower in Prague in the Czech Republic. Hey. Very nice. Yes. You could have also gone for, and I'm rather disappointed you didn't say this one, uh, Blackpool Tower in Blackpool, England. Oh. Which is the best one. (laughs) Better than the Eiffel Tower. No, it's not. Certainly. Next question. Okay. If you climb the Eiffel Tower, you will probably have a bad time, but you'll get fit while doing it because there are how many steps in the tower? And I've got options. That's good. 1,665, 2,665, or 3,665. I'm just going to go 1,000 because the other ones seem like kooky numbers. Yeah, like if you do 1665, that's, yeah, about, I don't know, 50 floors. That sounds... Yeah, I recently climbed something in Freiburg, Mm -hmm. which was maybe 200 steps. It's pretty tall. 2,000 and Mm -hmm. 3,000, those are big jumps. How tall is that tower? Eiffel Tower. Uh, It has a symbolic... 18, 18, 18... Do you want me to tell you how uh, high the Eiffel Tower is? 330 meters. Oh, it's not symbolic. Unless you're trying to symbolize the number 330. <laughs> 1,000. I'm, I'm, I, that was my gut. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think 2,000 would be like a lot. I think very small taps. Everyone knows you don't put the answer in the middle. Yeah. That's and like, three sounds crazy. So, Which is why putting the answers in the middle is evil. But I'll go with you. 1,000. 65. 
1,665. 665. Yes. Yes. Is the correct answer. Ooh. Well nice. done. Um, next, what does the Eiffel Tower have in common with Margaret Thatcher? And you can be creative with your answers if you want for comedy, Ooh. comedy value. Spiky personality. Made of metal and no, oh, yeah, no I know beating it. heart. In the, it's just a machine. No. They were both portrayed by Meryl Streep. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes i got it it has to do with the material mm-hmm. uh they have the same nickname exactly la dame de fer the iron lady yes they're both known as the iron lady yes yep okay and finally which james bond film features an action scene at the eiffel tower obviously you're huge james bond fans uh i'm going to defer to fred well, I'll remove the ones I know I've watched. <laughs> so no recent one. Also, you're someone who likes older things. I'll give you a clue. It's got Grace Jones and Christopher Walken in it. So, so maybe I'd, I'd ask the question for the Christopher Walken, uh, the opportunity to do uh, the Christopher Walken accent. Yeah. Uh, Any excuse. Yeah. So Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Which who was in it? Alias. Yes. Right. And he's dead. <laughs> R.I.P. Mm, unfortunately. In, in the show. He's been, I mean... I think in real life as well. <laughs> yeah, in real life as well. But in the show, he's been dealt with, at least. Eliminated. Ah, uh, was he? No. Yes, I forget. It, he's not, not an alias it, podcast. No. When you get to the top of the Eiffel Tower, what do you get? You get a fantastic... A view for, for a kill. Well done. Duran with, Duran. Yeah. If you view, said, with the Duran Duran song. I should have said that too, but uh, yeah, a view to a kill. A view to a kill. But I never know in which order they are. Octopussy and all that. I'm just like, uh, a view for to a kill. A view to a kill, which makes no sense grammatically. A view? Should be a view for a kill, surely. No, a view to, you're just watching it. A view to a kill. I see, I see, I see. You're All a spectator. Right. Can we wrap this up so I can go listen to Duran Duran? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got them all right, even though you didn't. Uh, somehow you managed to get them all right because I helped you. Because um, I'm nice like that. Yeah. You are. You're the opposite of an iron lady. You're I am a, a marshmallow man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take that. Now that we are done with the quiz section of the show, let's now move on to the alias section of this little podcast with the episode 21 Rendezvous, which is choke full of amazing set pieces and acting and all the things. I can't wait. First of all, if I may, Bradley Cooper. Can we talk about Bradley Cooper? Yeah. Oh, my God. This Are we is, fans? Yes. This, yeah. this is like the showcase. This is like the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's all coming together for him. This has been your favorite B-plot of the one to two B-plots. I was following the Will Tippin train, and when it slowed down for a bit, and he was just in Jennifer Garner's apartment, just doing nothing because his plot was at a stop, what? I was like, Crunched. one day... He doesn't live there, though, right? What's he doing hanging around there? Because he has no plot. He just has to be there. He has a crush on Sydney. He has a crush on Sydney. Oh, yeah. They've kissed over vodka and ice cream. Was it not tequila? Tequila. Yes, yes. Tequila shots. Does he say that she, he loves her or does she say that she loves him? At the no. End of this no episode? one says it. No, someone oh, says... Oh, he says he loves her. He says I that, loved... That was such a sweet moment. Yeah, it was actually. She said, I don't, I don't love you for your job. I just love you. For what you do or what yeah. you don't do. Yeah. I just love you. And your jawline. Damn. I mean, yes, also. Who, who wouldn't? Um, no, they do love each other, but, you know, yeah. it's, uh, um, you know, it's a it's a will they, won't they? Yeah. Will. Will. They. Will they tap in? Will tap in. <laughs> <laughs> just tap it in. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that there were three moments when, when dad tells him... He didn't think you had the guts to contact me. He's like, well, I assume that's a compliment. <laughs> Amazing. When dad tells him, you're going to be taken by men in a van. They'll be armed. He's like, okay. <laughs> I know what that feels like. I know what that feels like. <laughs> and when he sees Sydney while being pinged on math, and he goes, what? 
I was like, that's incredible. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> it's my, f- I think it's my favorite reaction in this whole series. I know. It's I, so good. As an acting choice, it's perfect. And it's he great. Yeah. As you would. It's like, what the hell's going on? I'm about to be murdered. I just drank, <laughs> I drank meth. <laughs> A red, man I red, barely know. Red meth as well. <laughs> Someone said, drink meth. And I was like, oh, they're going to kill me, aren't they? And then Sydney shows up. In purse of all places, purse. of course you're screaming. That was an amazing reaction. I it was it. so good. It was so so good. I Every think this moment. is this is like my my besides the pilot, like top episode of the season. Yeah, it all comes together. I totally agree. I, I want to <laughs> mention the uh, the French names of Dixon and Sydney. What were their names? <laughs> I'm gonna start with. <laughs> Sydney's name is Madame de Belle Bernier, and uh, Dixon's name is <laughs> can really say it Henri <laughs> Henri Jambon. Oh, no, oh, it's yeah. not Henry Ham. Henri Jambon <laughs> and uh, Madame de Belle de Bernier. I was like <laughs> Henri Jambon. There's also the uh, other sentence spoken by uh, Dixon later. C'est bien ici les toilettes. <laughs> To which the guy answers, ah, no, 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 <laughs> before getting kicked. <laughs> what? C'est bien ici les toilettes. Ah, no, 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 no. I, <laughs> I didn't necessarily read them as French. I didn't pick up on the names, but like, you could, I mean, you could, I thought she was kind of like an American or some sort of foreign someone just like on tour, on a, on a lounge fa- music tour. Family like, name is Bernier. That's as French as it gets. Yeah, but when she was like, s'il vous plaît, on a une petite problème technique. I know, she was doing the, she was doing the Emily in Paris accent. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. For sure. But that was very, very, very fun section. When Sark was handcuffed and Sloane feeds the wine to him, I was like, this is high kink. Oh, <laughs> like, so wow. much. Wow. Tie me up and feed me Chateau Petrus 82, please. I appreciate that. With a radioactive that. isotope in it, like as a little chaser. <laughs> just to know. Yeah, it was... An very... exciter. Just add a little radioactive isotope as an exciter for me, Sloan. Mm. And now feed it to me with my hands bound behind my back. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, You think it was very close to just answering, yes, daddy. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Bradley Cooper is born in Nantes. Patrice Lafont, I think. That wig. That wig. Incredible. The black wig when he gets back to... He looks to... like a member of the Strokes. Uh, right. Born in <laughs> Nantes. Like, as if that's all you need when, you know... Until you were five. Y- until you were five. And he was like, okay. <laughs> so, like, literally, he's about to be... He's still high on meth. Red. He's yeah. still high on red meth. And there's a guy going, right, okay, you're going to be sent out into the world, but uh, we're giving you a new identity. Here's all you need to know. You were born in Nantes and you lived there until you were five. So if you get caught by some guys in a van, just say, but I was born in Nantes until I was five. I was like, and then like, okay, fine, you can go. He doesn't speak French. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 That's going to last about two seconds, that exactly. new identity. Hey, he got home safe. Wait, doesn't safe. Does, he gets mm. shot. Yeah. Oh, well, he got back to the U.S. Yeah. To the, the safe house. And then he's like, can I have some pizza, please? And then it's like, ooh, 30 minutes or less, delivery. And then he opens the door and he gets shot. By and the I, Brit. I was shocked. Sock. I was shocked. Yeah, you didn't see it coming? No. Yeah, it was Did a good one. not see it coming. I was like, oh, damn. Good gen. Well, even when the, the guards were lying down on the floor, you thought yeah, they were just I, having a little no. sleep. At that point, of course, but you know, when they go to fetch Sark and they're like, oh, he changed his whole blood. It was like, oh, damn, where is he? <laughs> he's at the CIA. It's, it's like, it's kind of the first time the CIA gets infiltrated like that. So, so Sark had a complete blood transfusion and then made a transatlantic flight mm-hmm. and it was able to shoot Bradley Cooper and three mm-hmm. other guys. Like, if that had been me, if I'd had a blood transfusion and made a big red eye flight across the ocean, I wouldn't have been able to hold the gun. My, my hand would have been shaking all over the place. But, uh, but you know how when after you give blood, they give you like a cookie? Oh, that's fine. He had his cookie. Yeah. And that's it. Did it have meth in it, the cookie? Oh, uh, probably. Probably. Laced in there. Uh, but yeah, I, it was genuinely shocking. And I'm quite excited to uh, see what happens to Bradley Cooper. My fave. I'm so... I, 
I, I was betting on the ro- right horse all along. Fred, you haven't seen Alias before, right? You're watching these for the oh, yeah. first time. First timer. Yeah, me too. So do you think that Bradley Cooper is dead? Well, I don't know. I don't want him to be. No, neither do I. Yeah. I'm always wondering how they're going to solve their cliffhanger as well. I'm like, okay, let's see how this one works out. Mm. Well, folks, you're going to have to wait and see too for episode 22 of uh, an alias, po- <coughs> not an alias podcast. Exactly. All right. Thank you for being with us, Luke. Thanks for inviting me to be with you. It was really good fun. It was really good fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really, it really was. I hope that your audience, like, who's this random third <laughs> British guy? Why did they bring him in? Is he a, is he an alien spy as well? He's Maybe. a baddie. We needed a baddie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to request some Chateau Petrus 33 with a little radioactive isotope added just for, just for fun. Do you want to say squirrel before we leave? Squirrels in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you very much luke thank you everybody see you for the finale of season one in episode 22 bye 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 thanks for listening to not an alias podcast produced by celia brando with original music by mad 98 if you love what we do leave us a tip The link to the tip jar is in the description. And you can follow all things trivia at Paris Quiz Mistress. And all things Fred at Fred Me Up. Until next time. Stay nerdy and keep quizzing. 